have a series of uh, three project updates, the first of which is from uh, Brad Osenberger, <coughs> uh, Program Director at uh, NHGRI, and it's on the Cancer Genome Atlas project. Yeah, hi everybody. I, I, in preparation for this, I went back and looked to see when we last uh, gave an update on TCGA for you, and it's been almost three years. Um, I went back and pulled the first slide from last time, which was this, when President Obama visited NIH in September of 2009, just uh, three and a half years ago, to announce uh, biomedical research investment uh, through the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. And that included um, naming NIH, a, or TCGA and NIH signature project, and a big bolus of, of investment 175 million, and I'm, I guess I'm here now three years later to say I think that was a pretty good investment. Uh, I think we've uh, used it well, and I'll try to describe that. So just a, a quick reminder of what TCGA does. The Cancer Genome Atlas, our goal is to do comprehensive genomic analysis on all the major tumor types uh, in the U.S., um, and, and a real key to this is to take each tumor type, each specimen uh, from each research participant and, and do all the analyses we can uh, on that tumor specimen. Um, so uh, doing exome sequencing, RNA-seq, uh, microRNA methylation, and even more recently added uh, some protein analyses, all on the same tissue samples uh, from these participants. To do this uh, requires uh, quite a pipeline uh, that's been built up over the years, um, a, a biospecimen core resource that processes all the samples, uh, collects the clinical data, six genome characterization centers, um, the three genome sequencing centers supported by NHGRI, we've added genome data analysis centers, and then a, a large effort to coordinate these data. <coughs> This is what it looks like on a map, just, just to remind you, T, NHGRI's investment in TCJ in terms of funds is through the large-scale sequencing program, the, th the three big centers, the Broad, Baylor, and, and Rick's Center at, at WashU. Uh, and that's our financial commitment uh, to TCJ is through their genomic sequence and analysis. Just kind of go through uh, a bit of history and where we're going. Um, TCGA, the genesis of TCGA was, was from a report from the NCA, uh, the NCI Advisory Board um, back in 2005 that proposed actually a number of, uh, they, were, they were predicting a number of technological advances that were, were in the works. And actually just part of this report was to, to design and develop a, a, a large cancer genome effort uh, with it was suggested with NHGRI. Um, and, and we set this, set off on this, this uh, program really in 2007 uh, to pilot this, uh, starting with glioblastoma and ovarian serous carcinoma. And we knew we had to establish the infrastructure, a pipeline, and then and feasibility. And we started this, yeah, Rick's here, with um, um, capillary electrophoresis sequencing. Uh, but we all knew that we were going to hit this point. We, we, the next generation sequencing was going to come on and, and really make this, this project feasible. Of course, with the reduction in costs, if you've probably seen this graph before that is on our website, of course, also there's a great increase in capabilities. Um, <clears throat> so although this was coming, we started with, before NextGen kicked in. Um, and actually, this first GBM report um, was with uh, just a small gene list with capillary electrophoresis sequencing and analysis and still using gene arrays. But then shortly after this, we, the project expanded. Uh, we're now about in, uh, just past this, the midpoint of the, the main TCGA program. Um, we're now up to 25 tumor types in TCGA. Uh, sample acquisition was really beefed up at the NCI at the beginning of the expansion. We added these genome data analysis centers, which weren't part of the, the, the pilot phase. To, uh, uh, it was recognized we needed both um, a, a lot more 
horsepower in terms of analysis to, to do the, the, the integrative analyses of all the data as well as uh, lead in a, in a lot of innovation in genomic analysis methods. And a, a major product of TCGA that, that have really only started recently are, are the large benchmark papers um, um, that I'll go into a little more detail about. But the goal here for TCGA has been to achieve greater than 10,000 uh, cases examined, and, and we fully expect to meet this goal by the end of 2014 um, in uh, more than 20 different uh, tumor types. In fact, um, we are now beginning to think about what happens after uh, this big, the, the major phase of TCGA. Um, um, beginning to look what happens after 2014, and I'll touch on that a little bit at the end. So just point out these, the, the TCGA network papers. These, these are each uh, um, really, I, I think of them as, as historical data sets. These are um, um, deep into each one of these tumor types. Uh, our goal is to, to, I, to describe mutations that are found in these, each tumor type down to a frequency of 2 to 3 percent, requiring uh, approximately 500 uh, tumors uh, of each type. Uh, again, we started early on with glioblastoma. Again, this was a, a pilot phase that did not involve next-gen sequencing. Um, but then that was followed in, in actually just uh, summer of 2011 with the integrated analysis of ovarian can carcinoma. And this was the big uh, shift. Uh, this involved, uh, instead of a small gene list, this involved full exome sequencing, uh, RNA-seq, and of hundreds of, of samples of ovarian cancer, and kind of set the, the standard then for where, where TCG has gone since. Um, last summer, they published the colon and rectal cancer work, the colorectal uh, analysis. Uh, the, uh, in September, into September, the genomic characterization of squamous cell lung cancer. Uh, and then uh, the next week, actually, the comprehensive molecular portrait of human breast tumors, uh, the one that uh, Eric mentioned in his director's report. Um, again, each of these papers really uh, uh, get a, a lot of deserved attention. Um, these are, in each case, uh, novel discoveries, and what I particularly, uh, I'll come back to, what I really want to go into also is, is some of the clinical ramifications of each of these papers. So here's where we are today uh, in terms of uh, a project by project view. Uh, on the y-axis are the total qualified cases, so the, the, the number of tumor cases that are, have been analyzed or are in pipelines. Um, again, our goal is 500. Um, breast, we, we put all the subtypes into a single project, and our goal there is 1,000 for the breast project. The ones in red have, have, have gone through a full data freeze. They, either they've been published or a number of them uh, um, have, uh, have written, the papers have been written and are currently under review. And then there are a number of other projects now in the pipelines uh, that, that uh, are we have full-fledged analysis groups uh, working, and a uh, paper should be coming out later this year. And then there's this tale where accrual is still going on, uh, and, and these will come uh, probably, some of these in, in 2014. A number of projects, the ones start here have closed. The accrual is closed because we've exceeded the, the 500 goal, um, although we are still accepting African-American uh, uh, specimens. Um, to, to fill out uh, some of the diversity. <clears throat> so all this can be found on a, on a project dashboard I would point you to on, our, on the, the TCGA website, a project, we call it the Project Case Overview Dashboard, that, that gives a, a, a snapshot of all the data available for each project. Um, each project is listed. You can see here the, the number of samples that have been accrued, the number that have qualified and entered analysis, and then for every single data type, all the rows, this is just a small corner of the dashboard. Every row represents a different data type, and you can see in there how much data of each type are available for that tumor project. Uh, it's, it's quite a handy 
uh, overview of TCGA. Um, just the, the, the top line numbers, uh, we have uh, now about 7,500 on our way to that 10,000, greater than 10,000 goal. Uh, cases are, are in the bank uh, qualified and most of these are at centers at this point. Um, greater than 6,000 cases with a full genomic data set. So this is 6,000 cases with full exome sequencing, uh, RNA-seq, uh, microRNA-seq, uh, methylation, um, and uh, uh, clinical data, as much clinical data as we can get. Um, again, and, and I point out also hundreds of whole genome data files. This number continues to grow. Um, and, of course, for every case, this is all, always in cases, for every case for the genomic sequencing, it's both the tumor genome as well as the normal genome. And right now on this dashboard, you'll find uh, there's data available in our database on 25 different tumor types. <clears throat> so TCGA was set, we, our goal was to create a, a, a community resource data set. This would be, data would be released very quickly and, and then used by the community as it, as it is, of course. But uh, we also have a large TCGA network um, that also has, has worked very hard to integrate the data and provide uh, first look. So things like uh, uh, cancer stratification uh, by gene expression or methylation patterns. You know, every tumor type, there's a list of significantly mutated genes and how those, those mu mutations are, are distributed across the cohort. Um, whole genome looks at, look at individual whole genome data. Now, this is a particularly scrambled lung squamous cell carcinoma genome. And then all this is then integrated into a, a look at the, the, the pathways involved in each of these tumor types uh, in together. So, um, um, although the goal, and, and certainly thousands of people each day are, are digging into the TCGA data sets, um, our own network uh, is doing a lot of work as well. Um, but I think we didn't fully anticipate when we started the program uh, how quickly data would translate to potential clinical utility. And I just want to briefly go through some, a few examples. Um, there's just such rich data and as we, as we learned, as the group learned to integrate across all these data type and really build a, a picture of what's, of the foundation of the genesis of these, these cancers, um, really reveals something that, that can translate right to the clinic in many cases. So just to go, go through a few of these quickly, in GBM, even that very first paper uh, early on, there was a, a, an interesting example of, of uh, many GBMs are, are, show hypermethylation of the MGMT locus, and, and these tumors require resistance to standard of care therapeutics, and, and the, the TCJ data explained how this occurred uh, through uh, um, uh, shutdown of, of uh, uh, mismatch repair pathways and immediately suggested uh, changes to the regimen, treatment regimen for patients with recurrent GBM tumors. Uh, the ovarian work, um, uh, it was known in, in ovarian cancer that the FOXM1 transcriptional factor network uh, was frequently mutated, uh, altered, but now with the, with the full TCGA with hundreds of cases, uh, this was a very high percentage, 87% of tumors uh, showed some alteration in this pathway, not always in the FOXM1 gene itself, but all these peripheral ad additional uh, uh, nodes that feed into it, um, suggesting perhaps a common uh, target for ovarian cancer. Um, but on the inverse, also the, we, the TCGA group identified the full spectrum, spectrum of frequently amplified genes were delineated. These are number in the dozens. But of course, each individual tumor has a different gene or two genes or three genes that are amplified and, and would be predicted to help drive the disease and, you know, really points to the, to the, the fact that we need to customize treatment for each individual tumor. Colorectal first, colorectal started as two projects, colon carcinoma and rectal carcinoma, but it was quickly confirmed that, that in fact, uh, the, the, the molecular 
genomic underpinnings of these diseases. It's, it's a, it's show that it's a single disease, so, so we immediately merge these into the colorectal project that's just one disease. And the integrative analyses showed, again, similar to the FOXM1 story in ovarian, the prominence of the Wnt signaling alteration and promise of inhibitors in this pathway. Um, breast, uh, tum tumors of the basal subtype uh, were found to have uh, the same genomic signatures in, in a large sense as the ovarian serous tumors. Uh, these are poor prognosis, aggressive tumors. And we can see in, in, in this, this shows copy number data, ovarian versus the basal over here. You can see the similarities in copy number, but, but not just in copy number, but other uh, genomic analyses as well. You could see this similarity. Um, and already ovarian clinical trials uh, are being adjusted to test these compounds for efficaciousness also in breast basal type tumors. Uh, importantly, also in this paper, the clinically defined HER2 positive tumors. It, it was known that there's always a, a, a substantial proportion of HER2 positive tumors that don't respond to the normal EGFR inhibitors. And in fact, um, in closer analysis of the TCGA data, they could easily divide the HER2 positive into two different genomic subtypes and one that is predicted to respond uh, to the EGFR inhibitors and one which wouldn't, and re which shows an important marker. Uh, that would adjust the therapy for those uh, patients with that, that marker. Uh, lung squamous, um, lung squamous is, is cell carcinomas are over 25 percent of lung tumors in the U.S., but in fact it's been very rather poorly described genomically. Uh, so this was the first real hard look at genomic, the, the genome of, of lung squamous and identified a number of interesting targets. Importantly, also, it identified markers that, that showed simil similar underpinnings to lung adenocarcinoma. And um, in, in speaking with a, a, a clinical trialist in, in, in lung cancer, uh, that they were immediately uh, going to test some of their compounds from a lung adeno trial in, in lung squamous that have the appropriate uh, mutations where it suggests it might work. Um, a couple of papers that aren't out yet, but will be shortly. Kidney clear cell carcinoma. Uh, again, this is one of these cases where it's known that SWI sniff uh, uh, chromatin remodeling complex is sometimes mutated in these genes, but again, uh, in the TCJ data, we can now show that, that this is a majority of these tumors, in fact, and, and there's a lot of interest in, in therapeutic compounds that modulate this pathway and potentially uh, modulate this disease. Um, and then endometrial. Uh, um, uh, in a bit of an uh, unexpected finding, 25 percent of endometrial tumors, again, share this hallmark, the, these, these, these <coughs> uh, markers of ovarian serous carcinoma. Here, here now, this is just like the last previous slide, serous ovarian tumors in copy number, the basal breast we mentioned, and also serous, uh, these endometrial uh, subtype. Uh, we call it serous-like now. And these, uh, these are associated with an increased risk of reoccurrence, and, and now we have a better handle from this work on, on what the, the genetic mutations are that, that drive this. So I just want to give those, those few examples, and, and it's, it's, although again, it wasn't our first goal to, to get these data right to patients where it might make a difference, but certainly it's happening on a more rapid time frame. Um, than I might have expected. <clears throat> so clearly what, what TCGA is, is driving at, you know, of course now if you, uh, the cancer diagnostics, uh, it's mostly all path from pathologists uh, reviewing slides. Uh, of course this will still be important, um, but certainly we're starting to see now the, the increased emphasis on genomic analysis in, in oncology. Uh, companies like uh, Foundation and, and New York Genome Center and others. Um, and TCGA is really providing a lot of the foundation uh, to, to drive uh, this personalized, personalized therapy. I, I don't like that word, but uh, individualized therapy in cancer. <coughs> so looking forward, um, <coughs> again, we've had a number of, of papers that came out uh, last fall, colorectal, breast, lung squamous, uh, coming uh, soon, these are under review, kidney clear cell, endometrial, and AML. 
and a number of other projects uh, that I would hope uh, would be out before the end of the year and followed by some, some big ones such as prostate and melanoma that will follow that. TCGA's created this atlas of mutations, uh, uh, you know, really, I think, been uh, successful in, in understanding, beginning to understand the biology of cancer uh, through this project. The, the, this compendium, atlas of mutations that drive these cancers. Uh, new drivers are, have been identified and, and, like I said, already changing clinical practice uh, in some of these diseases. Um, also, you know, I don't think anybody would argue that, that there's now firmly established that we need to think about each patient's tumor as a unique disease. Um, and I'm happy to say all the uh, um, major pharmaceutical companies have pipelines into the TCGA data now and are, are, are using these data uh, uh, on a continual basis uh, and, and uh, to drive therapeutic advances as well. I want to point out that it hasn't just been about the biology of cancer that, that I think is, a, is part of TCGA's success, but also the driving of technology. Um, you know, the pull of the TCGA program has, has driven the development of cancer genome analysis methods. This is a, a real flagship project. But many new analysis and informatics tools adopted, uh, should, are being adopted to all fields of genomic research, of course, not just not just applicable only to cancer. So in the next phase, you know, we are just a couple years out um, and on a good, a good trajectory, um, but we do think the TCG will wind down. There will be some final analyses certainly uh, for a year or two afterwards, but uh, Eric mentioned a workshop uh, that we had in uh, end of November, I think. Um, and we're, we're, NCI and NHGRI are working closely together and separately to develop some new initiatives. Certainly we want to continue this approach. There's still, even with TCGA, there's still many mutations, you know, out on uh, as we go deeper into these tumors that aren't fully explained and, and certainly there still needs to be some atlas development in cancer. And then more importantly, I think we're, we're looking hard at moving more towards uh, the clinical trial area to be, begin to investigate now the genetic uh, uh, underpinnings of, for example, metastasis and response to therapy that's going to require us to, to really get a little closer uh, um, to the clinical trial areas uh, to get these specimens and get these data. All right, so with that I'm going to close. Just uh, uh, acknowledge um, Heidi Sophia and Lindsay Lund uh, work with me every day on TCGA and Mark Geyer is still a real uh, key part of the team and I want to acknowledge Jane Peterson and, and uh, Peter Good who, who, who were involved in many years of the early stage. Um, and this is the, the NCI team. Uh, they have a, a full office for TCGA led by the Dynamo, Kenneth Shaw if you've encountered her. Um, and then uh, uh, they have the new Center for Cancer Genomics at NCI that we're working with, uh, co-directed by Stephen Chanick and Lou Stout. With that, I'll stop. Any questions? Yeah, Jill. Brad, do, do you want to say anything about how um, the ICGC project complements TCGA and what they've done so far? And yeah. Yeah, I, I neglected to mention that. Uh, TCGA is a major player and a uh, major part of ICGC. It's the bulk of the data in ICGC. Um, yeah, we've always, we, we were kind of a, in front of them, of course, um, but we've been very pleased to see that a lot of large projects uh, in Spain, in Italy, uh, of course, the, the, in the UK, uh, are, have been catching up and, and contributing greatly. Uh, we meet at least once a year, and, and there have been a number of coordinated efforts um, in certain tumors. Um, um, prostate is an example where one group looked at, at, very, at, at tumors that only occur in young men and somebody else is looking at tumors uh, that are, are refractory to therapy and, 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 and so they're, we've done a good job of synergizing across that consortium and, and I think it continues to be um, something that um, continue to be very important. There's a, um, they have their own data base uh, run out of, of the University of, of 
Toronto, uh, Toronto, the o Ontario Institute for Cancer Research with Tom Hudson. Um, and we work very closely with getting TCGA data into there. Yeah, Mark? Yeah, I just wanted to add <clears throat> on your point about uh, community involvement that uh, uh, the analysis groups have become much bigger than any of the TC, than the TCGA funded groups. The project has been really good about bringing in wider uh, participation by the community in the analyses. So I don't know if you want to amplify on that. Yeah, so each, around each of these tumors, of course, a big analysis group forms. And we, we designate a PI uh, within TCGA to kind of uh, be a, a leader. Um, and then usually there's a disease, a specific disease expert too, that they, they kind of co-chair the analysis. But then we invite experts in each disease uh, to come in and uh, contribute. And so, yeah, if, if you know of people who are interested in a particular tumor on the list, um, please have them contact us and, and we can get them involved. Yeah, Pilar? This is just an informational question from somebody who hasn't been keeping up with TCGA. What's the difference in the work between what the analysis centers do and the genome characterization centers? Are the genome characterization centers mostly about structure? Is that? No, they're data generators. So the, the genome characterization centers are, are data generators. So they're doing the RNA, the RNA analyses, uh, a SNP chip array, um, um, the things that aren't done by bulk genomic sequencing. And the genome data analysis centers are strictly computational. Yeah. I know that uh, TCGA <coughs> has had methylation, for example, an epigenetic mark um, as part of the program, but I wonder whether or not um, there were plans or discussion about including, you know, uh, histone modifications. I mean, many of the genes that have been identified, a number of them have been turned out to be epigenetic modifiers in some way, and I'm wondering if there's any plan. Certainly AACR has been talking about this was a workshop report on trying to um, gather um, groups together in, with an interest in supporting epigenetic analysis of those same tumors, which I think would add another dimension to the yeah. data. There are residual <coughs> tissues that remain in the bank, and, and we, we actually want to try to make those available, although there isn't a, a, you know, a, a, a spec sheet on the website on how to do that yet, or we don't really know yet. But, but uh, there, there, we have begun some protein analyses, mostly in, the, in you know, phosphoprotein chips and that sort of thing. But yeah, right now the histone modifiers are really not part of the project. Yeah, Lon. So I'm, oh, sorry. I'm, uh, I'm intrigued by these, uh, these immediate clinical translation findings. And I'm, I'm wondering, as those are discovered, and as they're going presumably to clinical trials with maybe existing therapies, but new indication, are you using the infrastructure that you've got for TCGA to analyze pre- and post-tumor given treatment today? Or is that a, an opportunity that one could grasp? Yeah, it's a, I think it's an opportunity. It's, it's uh, certainly NCI is making a lot of movements uh, towards making all their clinical trials genomically enabled. <laughs> um, but yeah, really that's more in, in NCI's court and they certainly see the value of that, but, but yeah, we're, it's kind of making steps, incremental steps towards that. But the TCGA itself, though, those, those are all de-identified, those samples. No, no, and, I understand. Yeah. It was more infrastructure. You've got the teams yeah. for analysis, for data collection, for standards, oh. I presume. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, that, that's actually a point for, for the, looking at the future, is yeah, we realize we've got this big infrastructure built, and so those are some of the sort of things we're looking at now uh, to see if we can build on that and take advantage of it. Yeah. David. Another forward-looking question. You mentioned metastasis and treatment resistance as possible themes for uh, future phases. And could you just clarify for me what the degree of stratification of the tumors that have already been analyzed is? If you say 500 for a particular cancer type, is that all primary or does that already include a mixture of primary met metastatic, uh, the failed to respond to treatment? Um, these are, TCJ is all primary tumors. Um, there are a few cases where we have additional 
samples from the same patient. But these are all primary, so we did not design it in a way to really go after those questions. And how about the issue of tumor heterogeneity within a primary? Uh, what, what's the level of multiple analysis of what might be a tumor uh, looking like mini tumor? Um, again, we, we, we have a few things. We're actually talking about doing a pilot in, in that because we have tissue cases where we, we can know we're at least millimeters apart, maybe a centimeter, but, but no, there's, there's been, we really don't have, didn't do the accrual in such a way um, that we can take samples that are far apart geography, geog geographically or anything like that. So it's, we actually do the heterogeneity simply through one sample and going deep into the sequence to try to understand it, but that's all. Yeah, there's more and more of that popping into TCGA as we figure out how to do it. So the AML data set, for example, there's extensive uh, analysis of uh, heterogeneity in all of those primary tumors. There's also a number of samples, breast, I think, where uh, there are trios, or there's a, a primary tumor, adjacent, non-malignant, and a blood normal to get some idea of, of what we see in the adjacent tissue in terms of, of new mutations. Field effects. Huh? The, yeah. of, the so-called field effects, right. Yeah. So it's, it's in there, and I think it's, it's maturing along with our ability to really do those kinds of analyses. But some of this will have to wait till the next phase. As you're, as you're going towards that, uh, I think some, both the last two questions, are heading towards uh, some of the technical challenges. You mentioned there was some technical development, but you know, for example, the, you know, over the last 11 years, we've uh, been sampling um, blood and when possible tumor from, from all of the NCI uh, clinical trial uh, studies for the cooperative group I'm involved in. We have blood on almost 90% of the, of the patients, but 40,000 patients worth. We have, have uh, fixed tumor right. on a, a, about 30%, and we have fresh tumor on almost none. And it's not because of trying, it's because of the, the culture of way tissue is handled. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that it's a bad thing, but just that. So um, you could either uh, Don Quixote and try to get people to uh, freeze the tumor, and that'll come eventually. Um, or you can really push on the technology for handling uh, the, the fixed stuff and all that. I know every center has their magic way of doing it, but yeah. I'm not sure that any, I believe any of them, including the ones from our own center. We, uh TCJ took an attitude of no platform left behind. So if we don't get good quality RNA from a tissue, that tissue doesn't qualify, that sample doesn't qualify for TCGA. But for example, we've done now a lot of work with FFPE tissue. And of course the, the sequencers can, can do a pretty good job of getting exome from those. Sometimes the RNA is much more difficult. But so we're looking at now you know, in the next iteration uh, you know, maybe sometimes we don't have the RNA data or it's not as good quality and try to do it anyway. But yeah, we really are looking at FFPE tissue as being very important for the future. I probably need to cut this off. But, uh, Brad Sorry, will be around. No, it's okay. Brad will be, it's a very interesting topic and fabulous work. Brad will be around if people want to follow up. So Simona, could you please come forward?